Hi everyone, uh, this is Francesco and uh, welcome to Fab City Hub Voices. Uh, this event uh, is for those of you who want to learn more about creative and productive hubs, what they are and especially how to launch one in your city. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about uh, this uh, uh, maybe uh, blurry concept of uh, third spaces or hybrid spaces, but some, uh, some of you may think that these are vague and mysterious. This event is especially made for you in order to make them practical and tangible. So uh, also, if you've heard about the Fab City Global Initiative, or if you are familiar with the Fab City Movement, uh, during this event, you will uh, learn more about what Fab City Global Initiative is and where uh, you can find more uh, for this to learn more about these experiences. Uh, Fab City Up Voices is a series of webinars that uh, are meant to learn specifically about the challenges that are involved when you are up to create or launch these kinds of hubs. And also, but especially to understand uh, all the opportunities that these hubs, these specific fab city hubs can open up for the local innovation ecosystem. This program, Fab City Hub Voices, is produced by Volumes, which is a studio based in Paris, uh, specializing in social innovation and real estate. And uh, I am the director and co-founder of Volume. My name is Francesco and the company uh, I'm running has eight years of uh, experience in creating, uh, uh, operating and managing uh, creative and productive hubs in Paris and now supporting uh, different hubs in Europe uh, to launch and uh, fully be fully operative. The Fab City Hub Voices uh, series uh, is part of a European uh, project called Centrino, in which specifically a volume is uh, involved because we are uh, in charge of supporting the creation of uh, nine Fab City Hubs, the first of which we uh, proudly, very proudly and very difficultly opened in Paris the last November. Uh, and so uh, the, the, the aim of Centrino is to have nine Fab City Hubs in Europe which uh, could be able to um, improve uh, our urban models in Europe to make uh, our cities more circular and more productive. But before I go on, I would like to introduce uh, Milena, our guest speaker, so the, the most important person we, we invite today. So Milena Juarez, uh, Milena, she's from Brazil, but living in Barcelona. Uh, she's uh, an environmental engineer with a master in, in interdisciplinary studies uh, for sustainability, and she has a specialization in urban and industrial ecology. Milena has a large experience in different research projects uh, other than Centrino. Uh, she's been involved uh, in a different kind of experimentation and, uh, and research on the topic of circular economies, resilient cities, and how to create sustainable food system, for instance. She is currently working at Fabla Barcelona, and her role is uh, the pilot coordinator for Barcelona, meaning that she is facilitating everything that is going on in Barcelona for Centrino. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Milena. How are you? And uh, more than than uh, than this, how is the weather? Let let us uh, dream. How is the weather in Barcelona today? Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, sharing some uh, insights and updates from our pilot. The weather is really good. The sun is shining. The sky is blue, and I have an amazing garden here, so I can really see the 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 trees and. Uh, I think I will get a better inspiration for presenting to you all the things that we are doing in our Fab City Hub in Barcelona. Thank you, Perfect. Francisco. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sure that uh, uh, it will be super interesting also because uh, Barcelona is a very, very special city among the nine we are collaborating with. It's, the let's say, where the, the old Fab City uh, Global Initiative uh, was born. So. Uh, this is the, the, the last episode of the series uh, of Fab City Up Voices, but this is maybe the most special one. 
because we are kind of closing closing the loop of uh, of the nine five five city hub cities. So um, before I continue, some practical information, uh, some reminders. So this is a public event. We are um, this is a, a, an event we are opening up to the uh, global public. So we have an audience of people following uh, the event from uh, different regions of Europe and, and of the world. And uh, so participants are live with us uh, um, and we will be waiting from them. I can see some of them, Miruna, Katharina, uh, et cetera. Uh, welcome to the event. We are, we are willing to uh, be the most uh, useful uh, to you uh, to learn uh, more about Fab City Apps and more generally about creative and productive apps. So if you have any question, if you have any doubt about your local context or about how you could launch your hub, your Fab City Hub, do not hesitate to ask the questions in the chat or in the Q&A section of Zoom. Uh, in the second session, uh, sorry, in the second part of this session, we will be focusing only on uh, asking uh, and redirecting this question to Milena and Carlotta. So feel free and uh, we encourage you to write the question also during the, the session. You don't need to wait at the end of Milena presentation for that. So also uh, this event is being recorded and will be fully available in a few days after, the, after today on the official website of Centrino, but also on the Spotify podcast that Volumes has launched a few months ago specifically for uh, this uh, kind of contents. You can look for it on Spotify at Volume Podcast. Uh, and then before leaving the floor to Milena for the presentation, of course, I would like to introduce Carlotta, Carlotta Fontana. She is project manager for volumes and she's taking care of Centrino. She spent uh, the last uh, two or three years uh, investigating and researching historical and geographical evolution of hubs um, in Europe, uh, among uh, other activities. I would say, I'm saying this to make very clear that Carlotta is, she's the, the biggest expert in the room today about uh, creating a productive hub. So she will be taking care of uh, giving us the context of the questions and also she, had, she will facilitate the Q&A session after Milena presentation. Um, hello Carlotta, how are you? Where are you speaking from? I don't know if you are in, from Paris or elsewhere and how is the weather where you are? Hi everybody, hi Milena, Francesco and all the participants and Gwenda also. I'm speaking from Italy because I moved here for uh, the Easter break. Uh, unfortunately, it's grey as in Paris, <laughs> as always, but um, I'm very happy to hear the sunny news from Barcelona. And yes, yes. ask your question and uh, I also have prepared some of them, but yours are maybe more um important and uh, concrete for uh, what are your doubts uh, and uh, to challenge um, the the local experience in barcelona uh, see perfect. you in part thank you carlotta perfect uh, let's now delve into the core part of uh, the session so we will uh, shortly give the floor to milena for the presentation of the barcelona pilot just a quick introduction for those of you who are, who are let's, let's say, beginners in uh, setting up uh, creative and productive hubs, we often say at Volumes that the hubs always start with a community before going to a space. Even if uh, what a hub is, is a physical space, the community ingredient is key and need to start before even going to the space. And uh, uh, why I'm saying that, because uh, this is very, um, particularly true for Barcelona, uh, because um, when you want to create a community, uh, the work that needs to be done often is uh, basically uh, promoting and running events because you need to uh, gather people, to connect people and to connect people and make them meet and make them uh, make project, project together, you need basically to uh, curate and run events. And this is part of uh, what Milena will present from the Barcelona team. 
Uh, so the, the Fab City of Barcelona is start is contributing, let's say, to the local urban ecosystem of Poble Nou, uh, the headport, the, the 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 area of Barcelona where uh, the the initiative is growing, by organizing participatory activities in different forms that can be workshops uh, about craft and digital fabrication, but also discussion panels, urban talks. Uh, or uh, educational program to develop a skill building, no? And this is very important at the beginning when you start a hub, before you start a hub, you need to, uh, at the very first, uh, have this community uh, meeting and growing. So this is a very important thing that we will uh, focus on today. And also, uh, apart from this, Milena will also explain and present how the Barcelona pilot is using an emblematic heritage site of the city as a temporary creative hub. The notion of temporary is also very important and very central to a real estate uh, regeneration in European cities. Uh, and after this presentation uh, of Milena, we will uh, continue with some question. Uh, so again, I will be repeating this uh, quite a lot today. Don't be... Uh, 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 scared to ask silly question because there is no silly question here. We are here to share and learn. So feel free to uh, to uh, ask whatever you think may be useful to your uh, local context. So maybe I speak too much, but now we are uh, in the in the most important phase. Uh, Milena, if you are ready, you can share the screen and the floor is yours for the presentation of the Fab City Hub Barcelona. Thank you very much, Francesco. Thank you, Carlotta, also for the introduction. I will now share my screen. Just a second, it should work now. Yeah, it yes. works. It's your screen, see it, right? And we can see it now. It's charging in full screen. Perfect. Glory to Milena. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Um, so first to say that uh, I'm here representing this uh, amazing pilot that is doing a great job. So I, I play the role of pilot coordinator, but I want to acknowledge that uh, we have an, a, 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 yeah, a great team here working in different activities. So my role is more um, in charge of connecting these different activities and people and in, in, in trying to see like how we can also from Fabla Barcelona provide the logistics and the uh, and the knowledge that is needed for uh, developing the, the different um, micro actions, let's say, that we do. Um, so I will start the presentation uh, explaining the title. So uh, I chose this title, Distributed Space, a Diverse Community, and it really, it really resonates with uh, what Francesco was explaining. Um, for us, the, um, this type of building community is uh, one of the most important and is Actually, it didn't start now. Uh, we have been working with different uh, local stakeholders for uh, other European projects and, and uh, other initiatives in Poblano. So it's, it's still a process of creating this trust of communities and trying to now with Centrino embed the new key concepts that we have been working. So um, it's a, it's a, yeah, a, let's say, um, Centrino is now the umbrella for us, of course, but uh, this community has been built and, and now it's really nice to see how we are uh, bringing some certain pieces, resources, skills, and people together for, for the activities that will present today. Um, and also the subtitle of the presentation is about yeah, testing Fab City Hub models in Barcelona. So I will, I will uh, introduce to you today two different approaches we are taking within Centrino for uh, testing and establishing uh, potential models for our, our Fabi City Hub. And uh, the presentation is divided um, uh, into these three main topics. So I uh, will introduce first of what is the Centrino pilot and a uh, briefly a storyline and its context where we are. And then I will go more in deep into the activities that we are uh, we are developing here uh, that are connected to different areas, but also different formats and with different goals and people participating. So first of all, for those that are not familiar with uh, the territory of Barcelona, I invite you to land in the neighborhood of uh, Poblano, where we are uh, currently focusing our investigation. So 
I highlight here, um, let's say, two different areas. So for some people, let's say that Poblano is more uh, recognized as this, uh, yeah, this red um, area that is more concentrated in like in one of, let's say, one of the, one of the neighborhoods that inside this big district. So this neighborhood was uh, in the past, like the, the outlined red line is, um, was considered the like a municipality of San Martí de Provençals. So we chose in the pilot to actually explore this entire area of uh, the San Martí district. So let's say we consider all this area as Pueblo No, um, because this was an, uh, one approach from the team to be more inclusive, as we know that this entire area was very important in terms of uh, the in, yeah like the, its best industry and uh, and uh, the historical uh, heritage of of Barcelona city so that's why uh, I I always uh, like to bring this uh, differentiation between different types of of zones in, in, within the same district so now that you know more or less where we are we are pretty lucky also to be close to the beach <laughs> so it's also something that it can somehow impact uh, the activity that we do. Perhaps we haven't done any activity at the beach, but we could, for for example, if we want to create and explore this, this let's say, green slash blue area of the city. So uh, Poblano is this very interesting uh, and emblematic neighborhood in Barcelona, which has been, which has undergone a, an intense urban transformation since the, the 19th century. So uh, Poblano was considered as the, Catalan Manchester in the 60s because of this great influence in the in the in the textile sector mainly, but also we had different types of uh, industries in the territory. So after many um, urban transformations, also important events such as Olympic Games, but also different global crises, we had uh, we have been fa yeah facing a uh, let's say um, yeah an intense urban transformation for of this territory and uh, and we think century know what we want to we are trying to focus is actually on how we can bring the knowledge bring the the cultural heritage let's say the intangible but also the tangible heritage such as the buildings and the infrastructures that uh, the neighborhood still has and valorize it for creating creative hubs you know so um this uh, is an important yeah, neighborhood in Barcelona, and uh, we are lucky to be actually uh, there. So we have uh, Fabla Barcelona, Pabrenoban District, and the Departamento de Educación de la Generalitat. We have been really trying to focus our activities in this neighborhood as a prototype for developing activities, perhaps in, in the future, more in the, at a city scale. So I just mentioned the, the other partners in Barcelona, but we our pilots composed by these three main organizations which is uh, the Department of Education of Catalonia, which is more responsible for the educational activities that we developed here with the vocational training uh, programs. Then we have Poblano Urban District uh, as also a key partner in the pilot, which connect us with this uh, important creative sectors in Poblano. And we are, uh, as Fabla Barcelona, we are involved in all the activities and also coordinating the pilot in uh, the different key concepts. Um, so, yeah, I want to also bring the, before talking about the, the main activities of our public city hub, to bring the, 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 the let's say, the overall storyline for our pilot. So we are really focusing on understanding the potential of this neighborhood that's called Poblano and valorizing its industrial heritage as sites for creating um, space for knowledge sharing. Uh, to create collaborative production models and also uh, to understand how these sites can be tra perhaps transformed in creative hubs in which the community can, can be part and can be the protagonist of, of this uh, new, let's say, model of um, making local production. And how we do it, so um, the main idea is trying to bridge the gap between different elements that are composed by heritage, education, Circularity and of course the local communities. So you see that in our, yeah, in all the activities that we we developed, we really try to combine this element. Sometimes it is a bit more challenging, or sometimes it's even more difficult to target a certain type of community. But the idea is always to 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 explore how 
yeah, like the, the best way that we can be more, more inclusive and, and uh, consider different voices for co-creating this potential future for this neighborhood together. So that, um, and then two pillars of our activities is actually to valorize the local production through manufacturing activities and also fostering this role of local producers, producers sorry, and urban artisanship um, to bring this, this production back to the cities. And also, of course, using the skills from vocational tra vocationally training professionals in revitalizing this all this uh, local economy that we want to explore. Um, also, before starting <laughs> talking about the activities, one very important step for our um, better understanding of this territory was it was possible um, due to the the intense ecosystem mapping that we did. In Poblano, uh, with the support from metabolic institution. So, and here this image is just representing one of the approaches that we took, uh, that we call the bottom-up ecosystem mapping. So, really trying to understand what are the resources, the people, the infrastructures, the skills that are viable in territory, and then from this knowledge and is trying to understand what would be potential connections between all these resources. So the image we see here is actually a software we are using in, uh, in Centrino. The different pilots also have been using it. Uh, and all these areas you can see is not necessarily a real connections that are happening, but we took the time to evaluate potential uh, collaboration that could, could happen in the, in the present and the future, consider different types of uh, stakeholders, elements, uh, resources, waste, so how this neighborhood can be more productive. And one big, um, yeah, one part, very important thing for us uh, as our pilot is really focused on the, the bringing the local manufacturer back to the city is the establishment of MakeWorks. So um, you will hear from, from me this, <laughs> the name of this initiative uh, more than one time that in this presentation is because the, the, the way that um, we are also creating communities in, in our pilot is through the establishment of this MakeWorks region in Catalonia. So we are also starting exploring the territory of Poblano. Um, so MakeWorks is an open library, let's say, open, uh, yeah, open library to connect material providers, um, workshops, facilities, and uh, manufacturers. So the idea of this platform that is actually uh, divided in other regions uh, across Europe is really to try to connect these people. So perhaps you are looking for a specific machine uh, that can be um, a CNC or a laser cut. So we can use the future systems of this, uh, the different re regions and look for the specific machine that you need, or perhaps you're looking for a specific process or a specific uh, type of a skill. So it, uh, it helps us to really create these connections and. Uh, and this is a way that we are also trying to give more visibility to this community of makers and uh, artisans in the territory. So here you can see just some of them that has been listed to the to the um, to the initiative. So we have our yeah own approach to really visit them in person and to know their spaces. We take the opportunity also to take pictures and really create these profiles in which they can also be more um, valorized. And uh, perhaps I could share later when I stop sharing my screen, uh, a blog post that we wrote that we combined and we explained a bit about this, all this bottom up ecosystem app that we did, including this uh, presentation. It's about potential circular flows. So how this uh, resources and materials and knowledge can be actually recirculated in the territory. It's a very interesting, um, Presentation. Yeah, I will not share here, otherwise I will, uh, uh, because the time is short, but I can share with you the, the blog post afterwards. Uh, so now moving to the, the topic of today, now that we are, you already have a better understanding about the things we are doing, um, I will not list and, not, and neither read all the 10 principles of the Fabric City Hubs, but I really want to, to put them here as a, as a way that uh, that is kind of a mirror that the way that we do in Barcelona. So um, we try to revisit these principles to see that we are really aligned with the, the overall strategy. So as we 
as you know, we have this uh, nine different pilots in the in the project in a way that we can really try to create connections and and exchange information about the establishment establishment of our hubs is really trying to to work uh, within this these ten principles. So um, you see in the presentation that I really try to to explain in more practical cases the way that we are uh, lending these uh, principles in our territory. And then, uh, yeah, so I removed this for, as, as I explained before, we have uh, been testing different approaches for the establishment of our Fabi City Hub in Barcelona. So our, like, let's say our main goal is to test and establish an innovation hub model rooted in a diverse community of stakeholders, uh, supporting the efficient and shared use of local resources and promoting collaborative actions. So the two approaches that we are um, testing now is um, really focusing on physical spaces. So we valorize and we understand the importance of having uh, distributed spaces, but also centralized spaces where people can actually meet. Um, and this, this part of the, 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 the research that's about understanding the context for us was really important to really understand that the city is full of resources, right? So sometimes we don't really need to rent a new space and start a new uh, facility full of uh, machines and, and uh, facilities that we can uh, start to use as a community. But we already, if you, if you really use the, the city as a mine, you know, like this concept of also urban mining, really trying to extract the, the viable resources, uh, we understand that there are already some um, facilities and infrastructures that we can take advantage of. So the, our two approaches are focused on uh, the establishment of our publicity hub model testing uh, the activities in one of the buildings that is called IAC, the Institute of uh, Advanced Architecture of Catalonia, where Fab Lab Barcelona is, is, um, is based. And the second part, the second approach that we are testing now, and it's something new that we will be sharing with you, is the is one of the exhibition that we are organizing in collaboration with all the other two partners in, in Barcelona and many other local actors at uh, Calalie. And I will explain you why in this space and why this um, this different approach of a temporary hub city hub. Uh, so I will start first explaining the approach that we are taking at IAC. So we have been um, really trying to, to open the, the, let's say, the doors for the community to take part in this uh, co-creation of a more resilient future in a more productive neighborhood. So one activity that we really like to do, and uh, it has been working really well, is really creating this moment uh, for opening the dialogue with a public and private actors that are already leading some local initiatives. So of course, valorizing the, the work that has been done uh, from other initiatives in the territory. So of course, we are not the first one really trying to push a more resilient future. So why not to join forces, right? With other um, institutions and mainly, the, uh, not mainly, but also trying to valorize the the some collaborative actions that are also exploring the idea of creative hubs. So in Barcelona, we have, uh, and, and let's say in Poblano, that is a very fruitful space for collaboration. There are already many initiatives that are also exploring, perhaps with different principles, but really combined with the idea of uh, collaboration, um, local production, um, valorizing skills, valorizing local resources. So one of the, the events, for example, that we did within the Barcelona Maker Fair was bringing some uh, representatives of creative hubs to discuss the different formats, the different strategies they are taking to develop their actions and really being inspired by them and perhaps starting a, a, a conversation on how we could uh, in the future collaborate together and create and yeah, start to grow this, this network of different creative spaces that are already work in the same direction, let's say. Um, another uh, open event that we did was uh, the Poblano Urban Talks uh, at Ajax. So at, the, at, this point, at this point, we discuss also what are the impacts of different models of Hub City Hub distributed in different contexts of Europe. So at, at this point, we had the, the 
participation of uh, other pilots uh, in France and Trino. And some of these uh, talks and presentations are available on YouTube. So here, uh, yeah, I just brought four of them, but you can find those uh, videos also into the, um, the Centrino YouTube channel. So one idea is always try to document as much as we can, right? The, this knowledge as following our philosophy of being open source. So is it uh, something that we, we really having our, in our goal to spread the knowledge the, the, the way that we can. Another um, approach that we have been taking is, again, opening the doors for the community and the, the citizens to understand what is happening inside this building that's called AYAC. So uh, we, in collaboration with Pueblo Nova District, that is the main organizer of these two events that are called Pueblo no Open Day and Pueblo no Open Night. These two days, they happen in different uh, periods of the year. Uh, and the uh, Pobleno becomes, let's say, the yeah, the most visited space <laughs> or neighborhood in the in the city. So Pobleno is really really well known because not only because it is industrial uh, historical, but also to be this space of um, yeah, the, the the that concentrated the creative sector in Barcelona. So it's, it's the two days we. We participate opening the doors and invite the community to see the results of ongoing projects. And then in the previous activities, we really um, took the, the time to elaborate how the results from Centrino could be um, better, better explained. So including participatory mapping, vocational training activities that we developed, and also other types of research. Another way that has been used in the, the space is to develop uh, vocational yeah, activities for vocational training uh, students. So we have already developed two different uh, two editions of a, a hackathon in which we try to always bring local challenge from this same area of Poblano for the students to create potential solutions. So IAC and Fab City Hub Barcelona at this point was the one of, of the, the nodes in which students were coming to develop their, their um, ideas through a design thinking methodology that we created. And also we had uh, other workshops in which vocational training students can, came to understand and experiment uh, with biomaterials. He, this is uh, what I explained before. It was, um, it, it's in Catalan. <laughs> um, it's a, just a yeah, screenshot from our the website that we had for the second edition of the hackathon. So here, as you can see, there are many organizations on the right side that participated offering this challenge for the students. And then we co-created this description of the, the challenge for the students to work with. And then uh, we have been now seeing amazing results. And actually some of these results will be part of our exhibition that I will introduce in the next minute. Uh, another way we have been using the, the, the space is really to bring the community of make works and to know each other. So as you can imagine, uh, for people that are really working with local production, whatever the, the, the sector is, if it's more connected to yeah, wood sector in, or textile or metal, they are really busy. And for really creating the community of um, and, and allow the collaboration between them, we somehow have to bring the people together. So we, of course, take the time to visit them and meet them in person in their spaces and, and understand what they do. But one of the ideas that we had is actually trying to get to have their, um, this, the, the makers, uh, sorry, the members of MakeWorks together in different activities. One of them was about the emotional networking. Perhaps you already heard about it. That is a, a methodology to understand the feelings and emotions that are connected to different types and items of heritage. And uh, at this, in this picture, in the, in the top, we uh, explore the idea of working in space. So something that is really also connected to the idea of uh, Fabricity City Hubs. Uh, and the second picture is about a gathering that we did with the MakeWorks members to think about um, potential ideas for the exhibition. <laughs> 
And now I will introduce the idea of the exhibition that I is already was already mentioned to give your time and then uh, perhaps you are getting more curious to know about it. Uh, so this is a second approach that we are, uh, we are having in Barcelona that is about using temporarily the, yeah, in this case is a heritage site, very emblematic, called Calalier, and, and really trying to see how in a certain period, that in this case will be around a month and a half, we can kind of prototype an idea of a Fabio City Hub in a public space. So this, is, this space is owned by the municipality, and uh, the idea is not only having a physical exhibition that we show results, materials, content that we developed within Centrino and, and, and in parallel projects at Pabla, but also really creating a program of activities. So a concrete program of activities that are composed by um, different forms of uh, interacting, being this um, perhaps exploring more like hands-on practices or uh, having the, really the time to, to explore more um, yeah, different topics into roundtables or, or informal talks. So I will br br very briefly introduce the, the, the historical, <clears throat> sorry, of this building that's called Calalie. So this um, building was a printed fabric factory built in the 1953. And uh, after having yeah, many uh, different type of users, so in, in the 80s, there were uh, many craftspeople producing in this, um, using the, 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 the facility to make local production. And then uh, it was um, left abandoned and empty. And in 2001, the city council decided to, to yeah, to, to, to renovate this space and promote uh, and preserve this, this important emblematic fabric in, in, in Poblano. And today this uh, building is the, um, the current urban innovation center of Barcelona and is managed by the, the, the BIT Habitat um, Foundation, which is a Barcelona city council body. And uh, BIT Habitat, yeah, I will just show some pictures on how it was renovated. It's really, really interesting. The, the approach that they took also to, to, to preserve some of the heritage elements of the, the structure and the walls. And, um, and Bit Habitat is this, as I said, this Barcelona is part of the Barcelona City Council and they uh, try to promote and maintain the, let's say, international network of um, people working with urban innovation as well. It's kind of a platform in which urban innovation is the main topic and they encourage the participation of local actors, promoting uh, open and, and cross collaboration and, and, and fostering this uh, spaces for people creating strategies for the urban agenda of Barcelona. So it's, it's an honor for us to be uh, using this space as our a prototype of Hub City Hub for uh, this period of a month and a half. Also because the structure is, is really interesting inside. So as I said, the, uh, in the renovation process, they really try to to keep the the let's say the the identity of heritage of the space. And another very important aspect that connects us really well with this space is uh, that Calalier has currently one uh, is actually establishing a, a public maker space that is called uh, Ateneo Fabricación. I don't know if for or, yeah, though for those that are not familiar, we, in Barcelona we have this network of public maker spaces, maker spaces that um, provide access to tools, resources, and expertise for supporting the local maker community. Pabla Barcelona has already been collaborating with this network, and in this exhibition we will also be fostering even more this this collaboration. So for us, it's kind of a yeah, and it's an amazing opportunity, and uh, and uh, we believe it's a great example how cities can support and empower their local communities to be more creative and innovative. So let's talk about the, the Fabrica, uh, Pernod Fabrica exhibition. Um, so this is a, is a, let's say, a very interesting moment for us to show some of the results that we have been testing and establishing in Barcelona for the Barcelona pilot. So it's kind of our living archive that we actually have a physical space. Uh, how I'm going with time, Francesco? I totally forgot to. Yeah, we yeah we should uh, wrap minutes. up. Okay. Uh, 
uh, and uh, yeah, and go to the question because we have some uh, some interesting question to cool. Amazing. I will. I will try to to be faster. So just to explain some of the elements we have, we are bringing for this exhibition. So we really want to show like the results from the the ecosystem mapping that we did and the real mining analysis as well. I will also share now with you in the blog post again that I mentioned. Uh, also valorizing pictures of uh, local manufacturers and objects and items they use for local production. This exhibition comes with the idea of being a laboratory exhibition, actually. So it's a very um, important uh, way for us to create a, a more collaborative and participatory approach. So we had a series of workshops in uh, March in which uh, make, uh, members of MakeWorks were invited to facilitate activities for, um, for making the setup of the exhibition. So the structures, structures of it. So here you can see some pictures from it was the wooden structure workshop that we did to create a frame for our embroidery piece. That is, this one is really interesting also how um, a collective was, uh, yeah, it started to, to create this, this artistic installation. It's about valorizing uh, this, the role of women in the, in the, yeah, the craft and also in the activist scene valorizing also a technique that is very uh, heritage, let's say, cultural value. Um, and then just to finalize, we have a program of activities that will start now from May 5th, yeah, 5th of May until the 15th of June. So we have with this one month and a half in which we will be exploring different activities that will uh, be part of this approach of our publicity hub temporarily hosted at Calalier, composed by open workshops, talks and round tables, and also some uh, documentary screenings and routes across the neighborhood. The workshops will be in, uh, divided in different types of materials, bringing the, the community to facilitate this knowledge exchange. Here are some of the topics that we are planning to having in the round tables. So going, yeah, through talking about craftivism, but also valorizing the, the summer resources that we have available and rethinking new ways of recirculating these materials, talking about the role of Poblano industrial heritage, and also exploring the idea of how we can better from, um, explore the idea of a, a productive hub model uh, hearing from different organizations. Uh, I, I, I think here there was a video, yeah. And then uh, just to finalize the, the last um, slide, I just brought these three, let's say, principles out of the 10 principles of Pub City Hub. Um, not because the others are not important, but maybe this one better resonate with the things that we are doing in Barcelona. So really trying to create this community, bringing people that represent maker spaces, artisans, also the city council uh, and innovation centers, educational departments, citizens and non-citizens and other um, people to really be the protagonists of uh, what we, we believe to be the, the best, let's say, or the, the more inclusive model of a, of a, a hub that can be uh, used by other people. Um, so yeah, give us, so that, let's just so close to finalize the presentation, really tra trying to give this, the, provide the spaces and give voice to, to citizens and people to participate uh, going back to the idea that community come first and space after. So by having a, this strong uh, network and a strong community, we can perhaps think about exploring other facilities in the future and really using the Fabricity Hub as the ecosystem, ecosystem activator. And I've also shared with you in the chat the program of activities for those that are in Barcelona or are planning to come to Barcelona as we have an amazing weather in May and June, in June to visit us and participate in the activities that we are planning for the exhibition. Yeah, thank you, Milena. Indeed, Gwenda shared the, the link. To amazing, the, cool. Thank you, Gwenda. <laughs> those of you who are in Barcelona or want to travel in Barcelona, uh, so Milena, we can see that, that there is a lot of a lot going on in Barcelona. I especially appreciate also the, this uh, multiple approach that we can see, we can really see that you are kind of uh, looking for the right format and the, the, the right shape, which is the 
the main objective of a research project, no? Like experiment dif dif different formats and see which one gives the best outcome or feedback. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, I would uh, give the, the word straight uh, to Carlotta. Uh, she has prepared some of the questions we would like you to have uh, Milena your take on uh, with your expertise and perspective on what you have been observing in the last uh, uh, two or three years in Barcelona. So uh, Carlotta, feel free to take the floor for the first question. And in the meanwhile, for all the participants, you can uh, note down your questions or comments in the chat if you want. So Carlotta, up to you now. Yeah. Yeah, thanks Milena, amazing presentation and uh, full of uh, activities and uh, different uh, things going on in Barcelona. I have one question, I will go directly to a very um, practical and specific question. I have one that is linked to this uh, uh, temporary collaboration with the uh, Calalier, uh, which is a municipal building. And I wanted to understand better the condition uh, of this uh, partnership, if it's a partnership with the building, with some actors of the building, or with the municipality. I'm asking that because uh, the, the municipality actor we have underlined in the frequently asked question for uh, Fab City Hub is a key actor to assure sustainability and long-term uh, impact in the city. So can you, for example, explain to someone else how do you did you deal with this uh, partnership and uh, what are the also the future plan maybe if you have it? Yes. Thank you, Carlotta. Um, yeah, so Calalier is the name actually of this, this space, this building. There was a, this important emblematic fabric in, in Poblano. And uh, the, the, the organization that manages this space is called Beat Habitat Foundation. Perhaps I can also share their, their website here. And the, the, the partnership with, the, with them has been a uh, something very important for us. It's true that we have been already collaborating with them for concrete and small activities. And uh, at this time, we thought that we need, we wanted to explore another space for this exhibition that was not inside IAC, that's something that the people from, that are more, let's say, familiar or uh, with the activity that we do at Fabla, everybody knows. So we wanted to explore how we could reach different types of target and audiences. Um, and then uh, we we started exploring in Poblano, who, yeah, how, what, what could be, uh, where could be this exhibition hosted, considering also the element of heritage uh, as a main, let's say, aspect of Centrino. So we started to see some of them. And, and then for us, Vida Habitat and Calalier, they are like this great example on how they could actually recover this building and making this this um, industrial heritage element now converted into, into this urban innovation center. And, the, and the, the point that I mentioned also before, by having uh, the idea uh, that they have this uh, Ateneo Fabricación, the public maker space inside is also something that connects us really well. So we are really aligned in many um, aspects that we want to create for the future. So basically this partnership uh, was something very, um, of course, we had to, to understand because they are super busy in their agenda. They do many types of events and activities. So it was a, a matter of understanding what would be the best moment in the calendar. But they are giving for us all the support that we need, considering not only the, the physical building, but also some infrastructure in terms of devices that we can use for the different uh, talks, roundtables, and, and workshops. And for this future, we really hope to uh, keep collaborating with them um, and we will see along yet yeah, across this along the the, the, the next uh, weeks how we can take out some moment throughout the exhibition to think about what is next right so after having this vision we have all this infrastructure that was made new communities will be will be built right will be composed by participating in round tables so also how they can uh, taking advantage of these people that are already, that perhaps they have never been inside the building now, they are meeting and, and, uh, and understanding other things that they do. So uh, they, for uh, Bit Habitat and Calalier as a building for us are key aspect, a key stakeholder for the establishment of our uh, publicity hub here. Okay, thanks. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going directly to a second question. So uh, we will leave also the space for another very interesting that question that is in the Q&A. Um, this is a challenging one, but uh, you, I mean, um, I, I really like, and I think is a very interesting uh, uh, objective you have is about having a, a Fab City app, which is uh, identified in a space, but also in his distributed aspect, right? So exploring different. How are you, are you planning to make this uh, evident to uh, someone that it maybe is not in, but how are you planning to explain this to someone that is not uh, there? I mean, he cannot uh, understand uh, at the same time uh, a unique place, but then some something um, that could uh, turn and change place. Are you planning some strategies, uh, some branding to to provide this uh, um, double aspect, being in a place, but at the same time having the possibility to explore other places? For example, there are some pilots that are working on mapping, uh, uh, etc. Are you planning something about that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, of course, here there is a very important element is about communicating, right? Like what, what we are doing in an easy to understand way uh, for others that are not really familiar uh, with the, the, the way that we normally work. Um, and then uh, I, I would say that um, like this itinerant <laughs> model of Fabi City it's something that can be branded. I, I don't think it's a, it's a, a challenge for us. I think we really can understand uh, uh, and, and explore within our internal team how to better frame and, and give like a, a, a shape for this publicity hub that is composed by people, skills, resources, initiatives. So one idea that we have been uh, talking since the beginning uh, considering the dist distributed model is really the um, connected to what I said before, like the city, but also Poblano as this uh, very um, yeah, but, like, diverse uh, neighborhood which has many, uh, many maker spaces, for example, and people working with craft. We have already many infrastructures we could use. So for us, it's more, a, bit more uh, a matter of keep growing and creating collaboration so we can, we don't really need to use one single space for creating this like a uh, concrete program of activities, but perhaps I think it's very important to have a digital uh, space where we can explain it. And then uh, will be may maybe the main channel for uh, explaining what are the future, what, yeah, where will be the future uh, space for hosting our publicity hub or if it's come back to IAC and, so the idea of having like a proper brand and explanation of the city hub, not as a like a one single space, but actually something that it can navigate towards the neighborhood is very important. So for sure it will be working on it in the next stages. Okay, thanks. I, if, that, if, if I may, I want to jump uh, in here a little bit to um, uh, contextualize what you are discussing about communication for Fab City Hubs and generally speaking for creative hubs, uh, especially because I'm very sensitive to uh, the aspect of uh, communication of uh, such spaces. Uh, specifically, I've been in, I've been in charge of uh, this uh, this part uh, of uh, the project since the beginning of volume on volumes uh, how how to communicate efficiently. And I what I wanted to, the point I wanted to make is that of course uh, here in the case of Barcelona the point you are making is very is very true, which is okay. How, how, how do you how do you make sure that people understand what is your Fab City Hub if this is something that is distributed in different spaces some somehow um, uh, not centralized, non so not clear to understand, not 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 easy to grasp. So the communication aspect and the branding is super important. But uh, the point I want I want to make is that uh, this is also super important. Also, uh, in, in generally speaking, in other uh, cases where the hub is centralized, and why is that? Is because even if you are in a single location and in, in one single space, 
you for your hub, uh, let's say dynamic to work, you need to have people coming. You need to have neighbors coming. You need to have other partners connect with you. And so also in this case, the, the branding and the communication of, of the hub is super important, super important. And this is maybe one of the key points that this differentiate the Fab City Hub from the previous model that we all know, the Fab, the Fab Lab model, no? which is more the Fab Lab, our laboratory that is behind, you know, uh, in, inside some uh, building with machines. This idea of Fab City Hubs expand from then and open up to much diverse community. And when you want to expand, of course, communication is a is a, 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 a crucial activity. Uh, but apart from uh, this comment, I, I wanted to um, raise one of the questions from the audience to Milena. Uh, the question comes, and then we should uh, we need to wrap up because it's almost one o'clock. Uh, one hour goes very fast. Uh, the question comes from Miruna Mokanu. And uh, here is the question, how do you plan Milena, in the case of Barcelona, to measure the effect of this project and initiative you'll be presenting into the local ecosystem? Very, very difficult question, but I want to make, before giving you the, uh, the word Milena, I just want to clarify something from the perspective of Centrino project. So uh, Miruna, for you to know, uh, in the project, we have a whole block of the project, uh, which is work package five, uh, that is about the impact assessment. So impact assessment mean exactly what you mentioned, uh, how we measure the impacts of the Fab City app we are working on. And this uh, work package is this block of the project is led by um, uh, Tallinn University of Technology in the person of uh, Alex. Uh, he is not here today. So what I would suggest is to focus more on the take you, Milena, have uh, at the scale of the city. So basically when you meet people uh, or when you work with partners in the Barcelona pilot, what uh, kind of measure you think you can uh, then uh, highlight at the, at the end of, of the project? Is it more, I don't know, uh, events that you run, educational program or job created? Uh, do you have any perspective or any specific uh, uh, comment on this from your perspective, Milena? Yeah, thank you for the, the little introduction. It's very true. We already have been, uh, been supported by uh, a specific organization that is helping us to measure impacts. Um, and the, what we try to do in Barcelona is really try again to lend some of this. It's something is the numbers that we provide right to the commission and to the audience in terms of number of people that we have been reaching or a number of specific data, um, more quantitative. But uh, I think the and of of course job creation, business uh, and products developed, but also trying to. I think for me personally, it's more about the, qual the quality of this, um, the things that we have been reaching, for example, the collaborations reach it through, for example, only for this exhibition, I can already kind of uh, draw all the collaboration that have been created only for the, the embroidery piece that we did. It were like three main co collaborators, but also we had like more than, I think, 100 ma yeah, hands really working embroidery together and while we're embroidering we were exchanging information knowing more people starting new collaborations so for me like all this aspect of stories collection as well so kind of trans um trying to really 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 be um sorry really be careful in in documenting the process of uh collecting qualitative data and uh, perhaps now focusing on the question is more on the lo local ecosystem translating it into Spanish, of course, and Catalan for people to, so local people to really understand what we are doing. So there's an important aspect that is after taking the, the knowledge from the, the, the Centrino is really lending it back to the, the local ecosystem. Okay, thank you. And of course, as I said, the, the, the impact assessment will be uh, also published at, at the end of the project. Uh, from the the expert we have on board, um, uh, we need to wrap up. Unfortunately, um, it was a very rich and dense conversation and in very interesting points 
uh, with a lot of take, a lot of pers different perspective, different format that you uh, um, are testing uh, in Barcelona, Milena. I hope we will have uh, the chance to follow up on your progress uh, on the social media uh, following Fab Lab Barcelona and Centrino, of course. Uh, I want to remind, just to close, um, that uh, we are publishing the, this video in a few days, so you can use it to come back to some specific contents. Uh, uh, it will be published on centrino.eu, as we've been sharing in, uh, in the chat. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Volume Podcast on, on Spotify or uh, visit us at volume.media. And uh, again, um, thanks to all the participants that has been, have been following us today. And of course, thanks Carlotta and Milena and all the Centrino Fab Lab Barcelona team for the energy and the time that you put into this session. Thank you very much and uh, see you soon for the next uh, episode. Thank you. Thank everybody. you. Bye. Have a nice day.